everyone, it's me Darlene. It is time for another quilt block for our quilt block party. If you're not familiar with this series, I will have a link down below to the playlist in the description box and also in the comments and on the end screen. So if you stick around, you're bound to find it. You can't miss it. What I am doing is making 20 cohesive blocks in this series. I am working today on block number 13. We are doing foundation quilt blocks, meaning we're putting the blocks down on a foundation piece. And today's block, after days of breaking my brain trying to come up with something, I remembered a suggestion that Sandy Pro had. Hi, Sandy. I've had to change it because I just don't want to do something that I have to think too much on. <laughs> I'm tired today. I've already knocked out a concoction video, so I need something easy for this. And I'm not even sure what I have for an idea is going to be easy. We will see, won't we? Never did this before. But anyway, through Sandy Pro's idea, I kind of have a backwards approach to what she suggested, and I'm just going to go with it. So let's see how we do. As always, I am picking from the fabrics that I have been using for this series. I am going to come up with a centerpiece, and we're going to be doing four-sided this time. And we're going to try to make it look like we have one wonky square on top of another. But instead of building with a big square first and then doing like applique of squares, I don't want the fabric to be that thick. So we're going to start in the center, and we're going to build our wonky squares around that, assuming I can figure out what I'm doing. So I'm going to stop and look at my fabric for a second. I'll be right back. All right, I picked some fabrics out that I have kind of a lot of because I don't know what this is really going to entail. So I want to make sure I have enough. I'm going to start with a square in the center. Uh, I don't know. Let's see. Um, let's say about five inches by five inches. I'm thinking that's a little bit bigger than I want. I'm going to cut it down to four by four. I think that's better. Now, I'm going to put it not straight, so I'm turning it a little bit. It doesn't really have to go in the center, but I'm kind of going in the center. Now, here's the tricky part. I want the next block to look like it has been turned. Let me just put like a bigger piece of fabric here to show you what I'm talking about. Let's say we had a square like this. I want this square on top of this square, but I don't want to actually sew onto fabric, so I need to build that square around this square. But here's what I'm thinking. I'm just putting this baby here in the center. I'm going to take my handy dandy permanent marker and do I dare do this? Because <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Let's see. Hmm, I need a template. Aha, I have an idea. This is the first time that I am really seriously afraid that I will be wasting a foundation. Well, I can't waste a foundation. I have only enough to make 20 blocks. So if I screw up, I will be forced to do some seam ripping to take this apart. But I'm going to go forward with it and not be too afraid, but I am a little bit afraid. I have been thinking for about 10 minutes, and there are several ways that I can do this. I'm trying to do the least complicated way, but everything I'm thinking of now is suddenly very complicated. However, if I stop and don't do it, I'll never learn something new. So I'm moving forward. You're coming with me. I'm safe. It's okay. <laughs> I have like a six by six piece of paper now, and I'm going to put that on there in a wonky way. I'm going to put my little piece like this in a wonky way. I want to make sure that this piece is completely on the paper. I don't want the paper so small that there's a corner sticking out. So we're doing that. That looks good. I'm going to take a marker and I'm going to mark around the paper roughly. Take the paper out. I'm going to leave my piece here. Okay, deep breath. I've got this. Shall we do the blue gingham? Because I want to make sure I get it in. Do I have something smaller? I think I do. Okay, I'm going to start on this end. I need to make sure I have enough to cover the whole black line there. 
I'm going to put this this way and I'm going to go stitch right there. And remember, when we're doing this on a foundation, you start and stop sewing where your bottom piece is, not your top piece. So I can see that my bottom piece is starting here. So that's where I'm going to start sewing. And I'm going to finish here where my bottom stops. And if you want, you can always move your fabric over a little bit so you can see it sticking out. Then you know where to start and stop. I'm going to go press this to set it and then I will open it and press. Now, the little bit of the tricky part is this is where we sewed, so we want to trim off this side and this side, even to this block. So I'm just going to cut up. I'm going to make sure that I have passed my black line and I have. I'm going to cut up on this one too. So if I want, I can go ahead and cut this off now. So I can see this is going straight up and I have covered all the black line. Now I'm going to follow the black line with my scissors. I can just kind of see what's going on there. And this way also. Now it doesn't matter if you see some black line or not. It's going to... Mm, this is going to be tricky for round number two. I don't know what I'm doing. Let me get you closer, if possible. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen to round two. Oh, no, when we go all around, I think it'll work. Okay, just ignore me. Now we're going to turn it, and we're going to do another piece of gingham. We're going to do gingham all around, so it's going to look, hopefully, like this block is on top of a gingham block. So once again, oh, I... <laughs> I want to find a piece of fabric that will cover the black up there. This is going to work. So I'm putting it like this. I'm going to stitch. Now at this point, we are indeed going to sew all the way to the end of the gingham because this is our bottom piece now. So I'm going to start at the top of this piece and I'm going to stop down here. Now we have this. Our newest sewing line is here, so we want to even it up with this side and this side. So I'm going to follow this line and this line. I'm going to turn it. And I can see that my black line is about there. Oh my god! This is cool! Okay, I'm on a roll. I'm going to use this. I'm going to sew it right here. Now this is the line we just sewed, so I'm going to trim this side and this side. I'm going to go along the black line. Now we only have one more piece to put. Now this is not like a perfect square, but I can straighten that out when I put the next piece that's going to go around. Ah, we have a piece that will work. Likey so. I'm going to trim this up, and here. Okay, we have what looks like a wonky piece on a wonky piece. I think it'll look better when it's all put together, so let's continue with this. I want to use some of this t-shirt fabric, but this is very stretchy, so I'm going to go ahead and put some fusing on the back, just iron-on fusing. Okay, I ran into a little stumbling block. I was going to cut now like an 8 by 8 inch square to put under this, but this is sewn down now, so I can't do that. So what I've done is I cut an 8 by 8 inch square out of wax paper, so I can put it on here and make sure that that fits. And I'm going to tilt it a little bit like this. Now it's not quite big enough. So what I'm going to do is instead of cutting another piece of paper, I'm just going to draw outside the lines of the wax paper. About, oh, at least a good half inch. And <laughs> you can tell that's not a straight line. Do the same here. And here. And here. I think that'll be good enough. Now we're going to work on this piece. So this is the last one we did, so we're starting here. 
I went ahead and added fusing to this so it's stable. And I'm going to start right here. Now, this is long, so I am going to go ahead and trim this. Okay, I'm starting right here. And I'm going to flip that like this and sew. Okay, I'm going to trim and trim. And I'm just going to roughly cut on that line. Now we're doing this side. This is not going to be big enough, so let's take this, bring it down, just going to sew. Voila! I'm going to cut this way, this way, and my line is right about like this. Ah, I'm off a little. I'll just have to shorten that up when I go around the next time. And likey that. Okay. Let's see if I can stay kind of on the black line. Well, it's there. Much better. Okay, we only have one more piece to go. Like this. Like this. Get rid of this big thread. I'm going to sew. Ta-da! I'm going to trim and trim. I'm trying to imagine the line. I'm just going to cut straight across up here. All right, so we kind of have another square shape, but let's look at the shape underneath. See, that's nice and neat now. It's a little wonky. That's fine, and I like it. Now we're going to do some more around here. What do I want to do next? Maybe some of this. Yes, I want some of this. We have another choice to make. We can go around once and finish this off, but I don't want that because that would only be a total of four fabrics. Or we can try to go around two more times. I think I would like that better. So now I'm going to cut like an 11 inch square out of wax paper. And I totally meant 12. So a 12 inch piece-ish. And I'm going to tilt it a little bit. Okay, this one here is a little bit taller than it needs to be. I'm going to go ahead and trim some of this off. I think that's good. So I want to turn this a little. And it's okay if some of the block goes off the edge. All right, I'm going with this and I'm going to draw again a little bit outside of the line because I cut that a bit small. So I'm going to just do like about a half an inch outside this line. Go like this. This is going to go like this. And this is going to go like this. This is our last one. So we're starting here. And whatever I sew here, I'm going to cut in this direction. There. Like that. I'm going to sew. Now I'm going to just cut off to the edge of the fabric for this one. I can see that my line is going this way right here. So I'm just going to do that. And this one just goes off the edge. Next, do I have enough with this? I do, I do. So. Trim this one off. I'm just going to flip this over now and trim. Now I have to look and see if I have a line that I need to follow, and I do. I need to cut in that direction. Put another piece down. Okay, I'm just going to trim this up a little bit. There. Like this. So. We're getting there. Again, I'm going to just trim off all around. Now I'm going to look and see if there's any lines I have to follow, and there is. I have to follow this line. And this just goes even to this block. We have one more side to make our outer square, and then we'll just have four corners to finish. This is big enough right here, like this, so. going to start by trimming the underside 
Now let's see if there's anything I have to cut. And I do. I have a line right here that I need to cut. And then here, let me back up a little bit, I'm sorry. And then here I just have to even off this side. We are down to the four corners. What am I going to use for fabric for the four corners? I could repeat the center. How about we do that? I think we'll do that. I just cut a piece and I'm going to just use that big piece and trim it after like this. So, I'm going to trim from the back. Let's go to this corner and do the same. So, I'm going to trim from the back again. I have a smaller scrap, so I'm going to use that for here. And then I'm going to go ahead and just do my last corner too. Like that. I'm going to trim these both from the back side. And now I'm going to square off to 13 inches as best as I can. Now I am going to go so close to the edge all the way around. And now we get to see it. I love it. Oh my goodness. I'm just so happy with this. Now, I know this one was probably very confusing. Just remember, if you actually wanted to make a quilt block like this, if you wanted to do the easy way, you could just start with a big square and then make a smaller square and put it on there and then a smaller square, smaller square. The only thing is that you would have to hem the edges under or you could use a double-sided bonding like wonder under and you could just iron on your pieces and then just do decorative stitching around them but you're going to have layers of fabric when you're done. This way, I don't. So it's still a nice, flexible, and soft quilt block. Well, thank you, Sandy, for giving me an idea. I know it's not exactly what you talked about, but I like it. So, this is it. I will take some pictures, and I hope you liked it. Let me know, and I will be back with more soon. Bye! Thank you so much for watching. I have the playlist at the top right if you want to see the previous blocks. If you have not subscribed to my channel yet, I would absolutely love it if you did. Thanks!